everyone see my screen? Or I'm not sure how this looks on yours. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's okay. So anyway, this is a lecture about um, freelance web websites. My name is Nate Hoffelder. Okay, let me see if I can figure out how to... Okay, I'm gonna go back to the other tab and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so I was, this is this is literally the first time I tried to present on Gathering. I know I should have tested this along. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a web designer. I mainly work with authors, but I do also work with uh, freelancers. Um, both, and of course, I have my own interest in you know having an effective website because that's how I get clients. And I work with freelancers both to you know network and also to you know help them make sure my website it looks its best and it's most effective. Right. So, some of the questions you might want to ask yourself is, how can your website better support your career goals? Ah, what is the biggest pain point? Because this is the this is something that this is when it's most worthwhile to hire an expert. And um, so for this section, this lecture, I've divided into a number of different parts. For, um, basically, why, um, who, what, what, and how, and so on and so forth. And it's going to make sense in a little bit. Because the first question I want you to ask is. Why do you need one? What is a website? Well, it's, it's a marketing tool, and it's the one part of the, of the web that you control more than Google or Amazon or Facebook. Um, it's not the whole of your marketing platform, but it is oftentimes the the, the closer is what you know convinces clients to you know to hire you and not one of your colleagues. And of course, you do need one. Yes. Well, the reason I qualify this is that um, some of my clients in, I have sometimes, I sometimes get clients in various different industries and think some clients like say construction don't really need a website. I think it helps, but um, <laughs> given how hard it was for me to find, to get contractors to come give me estimates and do work, I don't think they need a website to get business. <laughs> I think they're doing just fine. So now, we, um, if you, I just, well, but that's for them. For us as freelancers, I think we need websites because it's, it's one, not having one would, if you don't have one and you're, you're one of your colleagues, you're all, all of your colleagues, most, for most part, do. And um, they're going to get the clients that you're not because you don't have a website. So, next question we might ask is who's going to build it? and who will maintain it. So the reason I you know, start, I put this in is that if you're going to DIY, then I'm going to put, suggest you recommend just different tools than if you're going to um, hire an expert. And if you're going to maintain it yourself, then if you're going to have someone build it for you and you're going to maintain it, then you should ask what tools they're doing and try to, and you should find out um, how easy those tools are to learn and how easy those tools are to use if you're only going to use them like three or four times per year. And so if we're going to DIY, then I guess, cool. um, if you're going to DIY, I, there are two problems I would suggest. I generally don't build websites here on these two platforms because I prefer, you know, WordPress, um, self-hosted WordPress websites. But for uh, potential clients that I want to do their own work, I recommend either WordPress.com or Squarespace. Is there, these are two of just a whole lot of different uh, websites website hosting platforms. I mean, GoDaddy has one, Yahoo had one. Well, GoDaddy actually used to have three, and they're, now they're down to one. And there's also platforms like Weebly, Wix, and I know of one that's specifically just for author websites. And mm, there's a, um, oh, well, speaking of platforms, although this is really off topic, but I just find it interesting. Um, 
I one of the things I'm doing now is buying furniture in online auctions, and that uh, online action site is on a website posting platform specifically for online action auction sites. I also know of someone of a, another platform for lawyers, just for lawyers. There are all sorts of dish platforms. You, you'd be surprised once you start looking. But for, of the two, I want to recommend you. The first is WordPress.com. It costs between four and twenty-five dollars a month. It, it is relatively simple and straightforward. But one of the cons compared to the platforms I like to use is that the features are relatively limited. Um, it's hard for you to connect third-party services without you know paying for one of their more expensive plans. One of the plus sides, one of the plus sides of WordPress.com, is that um, things like uh, software updates and backups and security are taken care of for you. Uh, really, the only real security concern you have to have is making sure that your password is secure and that your computer get, doesn't get hacked, which is obviously something we should be doing anyway. Uh, backups are already and software updates entirely taken care of for you. So that's two fewer headaches. And then of course, there's also Squarespace. Um, this is, I'd say this is one of the more widely known ones and um, it's getting better day by day. You may have heard in the news that they um, bought Google's uh, domain registration service. And so now Squarespace is going to both have, to be a place where you can register a domain and set up a site and set up a store. Um, one of, I've been using them on and off for clients, that is. I've been using them on and off for three to, I think, three, four years now. Mm. Yeah, four or five, somewhere in there. It's been nice to see how they've been getting easier and easier to use as time goes by. I'd say they're a lot nicer now than they used to be and a lot better, uh, you know, a lot easier to figure out how to customize it to suit the what you know the amount of white space you want on a page, where you want something located on a page, and so on. On the other hand, um, well, actually, I don't know if cost is really a, a con because where I direct clients is for they want to have a self-hosted WordPress website. I would send clients to a company called PeopleSource.com, and they cost around uh, eight dollars per month. So a Squarespace's price of $12 a month isn't really that expensive. But one potential downside to Squarespace is integrating third-party services. Um, this part of their, of their platform is a little complicated, a little hard to navigate. But once you've picked, well, once you've picked a hosting platform, next thing you might want to cover is you should look at is uh, what do you want to put on your website? So let's start with let's start with the domain. This is a branding choice, but it's also in that it's a marketing. Well, almost everything you decide about your website is a marketing thing. But when it comes to picking a domain, you need to look at it for a number of different reasons. Like, is it is it unique, or do you have a lot of competitors have a similar domain? Uh, it, can you define it as a, is it a brandable, is it a unique brand? Is it SEO friendly? And how difficult would it be to, uh, to speak the domain out loud? And can I look at it and see what you do? What does it give that kind of way? Now, if we want to, let's focus on SEO friendliness first. One of the reasons why I, I mentioned this I'm not really huge on SEO, but one reason why I mentioned SEO friendliness is that uh, about a month ago, I was looking at buying a colleague's business. And so I Googled the business name and I Googled the website to see what would show up in Google. And I found that my co the colleague's business didn't show up at all because uh, her the name of her business was made up of very common words, at least for in the website industry. And so, um, Lots and lots of higher range sites pushed her down the list, so she didn't even appear at all. And that's well. One thing I, I'm not huge on SEO, but one thing I do believe is that if someone if someone is googling your name, they need to be able to find you, not you know one of your competitors. That's why, for example, uh, my well, it's not my website name, but my brand, the author website guy. If you Google that, you'll find uh, me at the top of the list. And that's, I did that with just a little bit of SEO work. 
and my brand, the author of that guy, is also speakable because I could easily just say that to someone at a conference session and they can write it down and they'll find me easy. And it also says what I do. Um, for that, I have another personal old story because when I first got into web design, um, I had this brilliant, really clever idea that my first tech company should be named after the color of my socks, my middle school name, and whatever is eat whatever I ate last. And so, I, well, it's clever, yes, but I just concluded that my you know web design business should be called Valiant Chicken, which is. And that's a really clever idea, but in terms of marketing terms, it's a really dumb idea because um, Valiant Chicken doesn't tell you what I do, and it doesn't. People don't remember it either. Um, it took me two, two, three years of uh, people being really confused by it before I realized, you know, I should have changed it. But well, live and learn. The good news is this is always something you can change later on if you make a mistake. Uh, you don't have to stick with it forever. So once you have a domain, we're gonna talk about the design. Um, well, the reason I sent you to these two platforms is because, oh, well, I sent you these, those two platforms is because they have lots of templates you'd use. And a lot of those templates are business oriented, which is really what you need. They'll, they're set up to pr promote a business. So, well, one of the options for when designing, if you if you have design chops, which I do, and I'm sure I know I'm not the only one. Obviously, one thing I recommend to clients when they're um, is for me to if I'm designing their site, what I would tell them is to have, send me three sites they like me to use as inspiration for their site, and then I combine uh, elements of the sites to have to create something unique. And, but the other option, if um, you want to put your energies elsewhere, is you could just use one of the pre-existing templates. You could look for one, um, you know, for businesses, or look for maybe a template that uh, you know other freelancers use, mm. or perhaps a template that looks like something your clients would use, because. Um, if they if they look at it and they immediately grasp what you do and who you work for, that's the ideal thing you want to. Go, that's what you want to go for in a template. So once you have a template, it's time to start looking at talking about content. And of course, this is the biggest and most important thing. Um, you can actually use the same exact same template as uh, you know. Well, I wouldn't recommend the same template as another editor, but if you used a similar template or one that looks fairly like it, would actually just go ahead and back this up. If you do use a template that looks like theirs, you can make yours look different by changing things like the heading font, the background colors, the accent colors, and then you know moving, changing things like moving the page headings from the left edge to the center. Because even just tiny, subtle changes like that can make some uh, website look completely different. Or, for example, um, you might, if there's had to have some mainly more text, what you can do is um, break up your text with, uh, you know, stock images that will speak to your client base, and this will, you know, make your site look unique. But once you do have that an idea for what you want to do with the, the template, we should look at the content. Let's start with. Should ask yourself these three questions. Oh, sorry. Mm. Sorry, I'm just trying to zoom in so I can see my text better, bigger. One of the um, not so good things about Gather is that um, I'm looking at my slides on a very small screen, but they're sh shrunk down to maybe three inches tall, so it's kind of hard for me to read. So once you have that template, we want to look at this, you know, start looking at the thing about the content for your site. Um, you should ask yourself, what is the goal for your site? Uh, what is the one thing you want your visitors to do? And which of your works is more important, is the most important? One reason why I ask that third question is, is that I sometimes have clients with several businesses and or 
serve several different audiences for one business. And sometimes they need to decide which one they want to focus on first or which one is the most important. Well, that's why, for example, my website mainly focuses on authors, but I do still have several landing pages for, say, uh, freelancers. And currently building another one for um, you know conferences. Because I, one of the things I do is I volunteer with conferences a lot. Well, at least I used to volunteer with conferences a lot. But once you have answers to questions, let's start out with the homepage. And you, and yes, you have two goals for the website, which is for the homepage, that is, which is to sell you your services and you. And one other thing I should point out is that your tone of your homepage can range from a soft sell to a hard sell. For editorial freelancers, one thing I've noticed is that um, they generally go for fairly soft. That's the most common one. Mm -hmm. If you'll visit my website at natehoffalter.com, you'll see what I would term um, medium sell. Um, I'm you know, pitching my services, but I'm not being not being aggressive or strong or pushy. I'm just you know presenting it. <laughs> You could go um, further beyond what I do into really hard sound, really strong sounding stuff, but I don't like building sites like that because I, I don't like visiting sites like that. Um, there are actually a uh, few people in my profession who, or at least in a related one, who are really strong, pushy marketers, both of themselves, and they push strong, pushy marketing as their preferred marketing style. And I can't stand those people for, because of, for that reason. Um, if, if you also, if, we, if you meet me outside of this um, session, I'll tell you a story one time how I had a polar opposite response to that pushy uh, marketing. Some, some, it was, this was at a meetup group, and it's just it's kind of a funny story. But it, pushy marketing, because pushy marketing is quite polarizing. Um, it might work, but it's also going to annoy people, which is why I don't do it. And so, when you look at the content for the website. I've worked out that your website needs to have six, well, I think it does, but a lot of editorial freelancers go for uh, fewer things on their website. But if, um, what I would say an ideal website is that it has, says who, who your audience is, what you do for that audience. It, it introduces your audience to you so you know, have a better understanding of who they might be working with. Uh, it's the, your homepage would explain um, how your visitors will benefit from it. Um, it might include testimonials, an example of who you've helped, or perhaps a small portfolio section said. And finally, your homepage should have um, well, what visitors should do next. Um, by, when I say that, I don't mean that you know how they should they should hire you next. I mean that your website should have things like a possible um, a sign up form for your mailing list, so they can get to know more about you and then think about when they want to hire you. You might also have call to action button, which will lead them to your services page or to a testimonials page, or it might have a contact form so they could ask you a question. And so after the homepage. And of course, uh, once you've got, while you're working on the homepage, one thing you should also think about is product and service pages. When you're working on these pages, something to remember is a uh, feature attribute benefit uh, trio. Um, well, this is, I don't know, this is a really old uh, marketing term for a way to, you know, just to pitch, to, the way to pitch products and services, the way to pitch what you do. And the one reason I bring it up here is because one thing that, um, one problem, problem that we all have, and this is one thing we have to learn to overcome, is that it's easy to write about what we do, it's easy to write about um, how we do it, which and that's the attribute. But, but what really sells clients, what clients want is how they benefit from what you do. It's, you know, what problem are you solving for them? Uh, what pain point do you solve for them? That's what they care about. And that's the kind of language that we need, to, that you and I need to make sure that we include on our website because that's what's gonna really change their mind. And um, 
so something else that's that's one of the things because on a product and service page it's really easy to write about what you do and how well you do it but again that benefit is that's really what they care that's really what they care about and one of the other things you might have on your you know product and service page is a testimonial and you might and of course you should have a link to your contact page or perhaps maybe in the footer have a sign up form because uh, well, one reason I mentioned uh, link to your contact page, and I just I'm gonna go ahead and go sideways for a little bit here. One of the important ideas you should have for your website is what I, what's known as the customer's journey. Uh, you need to think of your website of how somebody will come here f for the first time, and then you want to go from them not knowing you to them wanting to hire you. That that's, they might know. It's hard to say how they're going to do it, and it's hard to say how they're going to go on that journey. But what you need to remember in terms of your website is that from your homepage to your contact form or maybe a sales page or whatever, you need to be able to know, understand the path that they might travel. Because if you have, for example, no buttons on your homepage, no links on your homepage leading to other parts of your site, they're probably not going to travel to the other pages, and so they're not going to complete that journey. It's, and one of the things they might see on that while on that journey is a portfolio page. So it'll be a collection of you know past clients you've worked for and possibly with a testimonial in here or not. And of course, this at the bottom, at least on I believe on mine I do, I link to my contact page from the bottom of my portfolio page. You know, so to make sure and to make, to make it easier for clients to complete their journey. And in addition to that, you should also have an about page on your website. Um, you can start as something as short as like a 200 or 300 word um, you know, bio, but I think this um, about page should really introduce who you are and why you do what you do. That's why on my website, I have what I would call an origin story, which starts out with, explains how I got to being a web designer it tells you how I work and tells you details about me, like um, how I'm autistic and how, because of my autism, I miss a lot of social cues. And also, it has a hmm, one of the things when I revise it next, I'm going to include a mention of my politics because. I, there are people who tell you that you shouldn't mention politics, but I think it is because there there are uh, political positions I do not I would not want to work with, and there are people who would not want to work with me because of my politics, and for that reason I think we should just go ahead and be upfront about it, so we can just you know not you know discover it when it's too late, not be upset with each other. It's just easier this way. Other pages you might want to consider is uh you know of course a testimonial page a contact page any interesting side projects uh free samples i do not know why that last one says america that's kind of interesting um we're supposed to, just supposed to say cloud case studies now speaking of your say the contact page I have a contact form but one of the other possibilities you might have instead is a page for um, instead of an actual contact page, is an option, a link to your, say, Calendly or some other scheduling app so clients can, potential clients can schedule a first meeting with you. One other thing I see with a lot of energy websites is that they don't have a contact page per se. They have a, um, I'm not sure what the word is, a long detailed form saying what type, with asking for information about the project. So it's, I forget, I don't know what the, my, work, my mind's strong and blank. I would tend to avoid having that as your only contact page, however, because if, for example, I want to talk to you, I don't have that you know big, long, detailed um, project I'm going to talk to you about. I want to discuss something else. I mean, it's those detailed forms are good. That's a good way to collect information. But if there's no other way to reach you, um, I people like me who don't have that big detailed, you know project that they want to talk to you about might not reach you at all. Oh, speaking of side projects, I actually, well, 
I'm too distracted to have any one project. So one of the things I have on my website is art projects, and I also have a page for thing, um, things like my Little Free Library. But on my art project website, um, I generally, every time I pick up a new hobby, I'll, you know, I think if I want to think I got good, I'll take a bunch of photos and add another gallery to my art projects website, web page. Um, the latest edition was uh, table centerpieces, which I just, I got into, I think last November, this October. Um, it's not gonna go anywhere commercially, but I just find it really interesting to do. Actually, no, let's go back. Free samples. Uh, free samples are great marketing, toy, um, marketing tools. Um, I have a number of them on my website. I used to have them as a draw for my mailing list, but now I just give them away for free um, just because um, I would like to, I'd like them to circulate. And <clears throat> because if um, someone uses one, reads it, and they get to the end, they'll see my contact info and it's a small pitch for my services. And I figured that if I can get them reading that and reading the pitch, then um, they a good chance they'll sign up if, they, if we're a good match, that is. Now, some of the other concerns you might have about your website is um, you know, mobile usability, accessibility, and SEO. For um, well, for the two platforms I suggested to you, mobile usability and accessibility is mostly taken care of for you. Uh, if you want to, if you're going to hire someone, you should definitely ask them about this. And also, SEO is mostly taken care of for you on those two platforms. But if you're working with a, um, if you're hiring a pro, you should definitely ask them about this. I would say that mobile usability and accessibility are mostly a solved problems in these days. You, it, um, I generally don't have to do, I generally do very little, little to make a website more mobile friendly. Um, because the tools I use and the way I build a website, it just ends up that way in the first place. And the same is for accessibility. Um, I should do more in this area, but one thing I can say is that when I build a website, I already know that things like font sizes, uh, contrast, uh, dark mode, and legibility are all, for the most part, taken care of. Um, at least when I make design decisions, sometimes I have to make, I have to acquiesce to a client's design decisions, and that kind of breaks things, unfortunately. Um, as for SEO, um, I'm not big on SEO. I that's in part that's because I don't want to put extra time required into like writing blog posts regularly. I just do a little bit of basic stuff like setting my keywords and you know making sure that I, you know, show up in, um, you know, in Google and that all my terms are, you know, my, that I show up high for the search terms I'm targeting so people can find me. Okay. So that's the, really the end of my talk. Oops. Are there any questions? Yeah, I left actually a bunch of extra slides in here. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, I see there's a question. What do I mean by third-party services? Um, well, it's, for Squarespace, I mean things like perhaps a mailing list service or for uh, at, analytics like Google Analytics or a mailing list service like, um, you know, mailing, MailerLite or MailChimp. Although, to be honest, um, if you want to have a sign-up form on a Squarespace site, you can just you know use their own sign-up thing. You can in fact use their own, they have their own newsletter form, but I prefer mail like myself. Or well, I'd also when I say third party services, I'd mean things like uh, a retail platform. But to be honest, they, this is another feature um, Squarespace offers, they just charge extra for it. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions? Is there anything I should elaborate on? Okay. So, this means no questions, or you're just not, they're not, the system isn't letting you speak up. 
about that familiar chatter. Okay. Not too bad. So if anyone here is a member of um, EFA, there's a free webinar you might want to, you should go see. Um, it's free to EFA members, but it's uh, $60 if you're not a member. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the link and Okay. There's a webinar by Aaron Brenner of Right Catch Editing. It's titled Creating a Persuasive Website for Your Freelance Business. I like her website. I like her presentation. Um I think it's a little adding missing, you know, structure. I mean, like the way I I'm more focused on um, you know, goal oriented or result oriented she just talks about she has a bunch of questions you should answer with your with your website so mm. My about page, which has my origin story on it, um, I basically came, came to that quite accidentally. Hi. I'm at the podium. I'm the oh, 
Oh, oopsie. I didn't realize I moved. Oh, sorry, everyone. Oh, darn, people. Oops. Oh, shoot. I was just talking to myself now. Darn. Um, so there's a question about uh, tips about an about page. Oh, I don't know if you heard this, but what I was saying is you should perhaps Google about page freelancer or about page small business, and then you know, read what they say. You might also look at what other editorial freelancers have. Um, my about page, I kind of stumbled on it by accident, and then they realized that my about page looks like one of my colleagues in that it has, it's not so much about as it's an origin story, it's a long and detailed one. Or you could check out mine. Which I think it's just an about or is it an or say origin story, but um, I wouldn't copy any one style too much because it has to fit what you want to do. So, and ooh, Athena, did you get my answer about the um? Okay, cool. You did get my answer. Okay, I don't know what happened there. I just, I guess I'm, you know, have the wrong keyboard spot on the keyboard. I was trying to scroll and it didn't work. Okay. Yeah, I guess I was trying to scroll the little chat box and instead I moved my my um, avatar down. Okay. So are there any other questions? Thanks for catching that, Jason. I, I, There's now going to be a several minute gap in that video, which is unfortunate. Okay. Well, I guess if that's all, I guess we're going to, um, I'm going to go wander off and see what else is happening. Uh, if you have any, if you catch me later and you have a question, I'll be sure to ask. Oh, if you'd like a copy of the slides, or at least the, the edited, cleaned up version of the slides, it's okay. So I'll click stop sharing. If you like an um, edited version of the slides, oh, you know what? I should have shown my, gone to my contact stuff. Oh, well. I'm around. Uh, um, I also have uh, another checklist for um, things you might, questions you might want to ask when updating your editor website. Now, be sure to have um, the, our host share that with everyone. So, I'm going to close the chat and wander off now. So, it's good talking to you, everyone. I hope this helped. Or... Hey, Aria. Well, no, I think I'll hang around for five more minutes just in case. Did you have any questions, Ariana? What does everyone think of Gather? I'm really not a huge fan of this platform. It's, it's cute, but they it's just not usable on my screen. Because you might see me leaning into the read stuff, it's because all the, the things like the um, names and all the other details are little tiny text on the screen, and that just isn't very useful for me. And even if I, you know, oh, also one thing I noticed, if, um, maybe I should move away from the podium now. 
you can scroll, you can scroll in and out using the mouse scroll button, but the text doesn't get bigger or smaller. It stays the same size, and that's just so frustrating to me because then I have to lean in and read things. Anyway, I'll go ahead and step away from the podium now.